If we're putting fish into lakes, then it's up to us to protect them. Don't walk away from it thinking it'll go away, because it won't. You know, they're here to stay. My name's Steve Fernley, I'm a trustee of Leeds Amalgamation, and we're at Kippox Park Rainbow Pool. Um, this is gonna be the new specimen lake. It's become a little bit of a baby for me. We stocked some fish, and unfortunately, within a couple of months of those fresh fish going in, we got a call that there was a fish on one of the islands. Um, I drove up, scared to death what it could be. You can't mistake an otter kill, can you? It was time for action. So that's when we got in touch with Angling Trust and see what they could do for us. Richard came down, gave us a walk around, told us what we needed, and it was a matter of, well, get cracking. Hi, my name's Richard Bamforth and I work for the Angling Trust. I'm one of two fisheries management advisors. I'm predominantly in the north of the country, my colleague Jake Devoyle covering the south of the country. More often than not, Jake and I are contacted by angling clubs, fisheries or syndicates where they feel they've got an issue with otters. We can look at various different fencing options from some of the cheaper methods right the way through to what I refer to more as a bespoke uh, otter fencing that you see around a number of fisheries these days obviously that comes at a price is it going to benefit the club uh, from having a fence or can they sustain a few losses of a few fish every year which other people would say is all part and parcel of nature unfortunately you get to a tipping point on some sites where they know that the only viable option they have got is they've, they've got to look at the fencing we can then highlight the angling improvement fund uh, we will assist those clubs going through the application form and where appropriate offer the necessary advice. The Angling Improvement Fund monies are generated from the sale of fishing license income. The funding may be used for otter fencing, maybe fish refuges or the purchase of non-lethal materials. Our advice is available free of charge to any fisheries, clubs or private syndicates across England. The funding for my role comes from fishing license income and forms part of the Angling Trust contract with the Environment Agency. We've taken us time, but we hopefully we've done it right. Most of that's down to what Richard's told us. This is our danger point. We've had to put a grill on front of here and there's nothing gonna come through there. You don't need machines to do all this. As long as you've got a good post knocker, somebody willing to do it, that's daft enough, you can do it. In this area, there's a lack of specimen carp waters. This is ideal for it. It's a little three acre lake. It's picturesque, it's beautiful. We're going to end up with new anglers coming onto this site. Without the fence, we haven't got a specimen carp water. It's as simple as that. You just can't do it. Any small lake owner, any complex owner, don't think that it's out of reach. Predation's here to stay. So just protect your fishery. You couldn't do a job like this without the angling trust. The finances, we couldn't do it. And that would mean another unprotected lake without the Angling Trust.